this week, we're hearing about ocean science work on board Coast Guard ship Amundsen. Some researchers are interested in fish and sea life, but for others, it's all about what's under the ocean itself. They're looking to make new discoveries in the seabed. Here's Land and Sea's host, Jane Eady, with that story. I'm looking at that rock slide right there. There's, a, well, I don't know if it's a slide, but there's little bits of rock that are coming down the cliff there. Laura Broom is on a quest to solve a mystery in northern Labrador. She's a marine geoscientist with Natural Resources Canada. She and her team are using what's called a gravity core to penetrate the seabed. It'll take a long vertical sample of the layers of sediment. I think this one's about nine meters long, and so we can potentially get nine meters of sediment, uh, like a record that could be tens of thousands of years old. Laura is trying to figure out if an underwater landslide occurred here in Nafak Fjord. Some multi-beam data of the seabed shows an outline of what they think might have been a slide. We're going to use this gravity core, take, take a core within that landslide deposit, and we'll take one outside of that landslide deposit. And we, what we want to know is how old is this landslide? Look at how black it is. Certain features of the mud, like shells, will help them age the sediment, and that will help them narrow down when it might have happened, and also if the area is prone to landslides. For any decision making that can happen in an area, it's really important to understand, are there any geohazards we should be aware of? So if there's been a landslide, and maybe it happened 10,000 years ago and it's never happened since, okay, that's the sediment might potentially be stable in this area now. But if it's happened very recently or there's been more than one event that have happened over a period of time, it's important to know that that area could have potential for underwater landslides. Because in some areas where these occur, those landslides can generate tsunamis. You're displacing a lot of sediment in a small body of water and that water has to go somewhere. Back in 1929, an underwater landslide was triggered by an earthquake in the Grand Banks. That landslide created a tsunami that claimed 28 lives along Newfoundland and Labrador's Buren Peninsula. But how did you can see the structures in it? These researchers hope that by studying the sediment, they can help predict where landslides might happen in the future. They'll take this mud to their labs for analysis, what they uncover here and in other testing sites in Atlantic Canada and the north could provide vital knowledge for those who live along the coast. So it's always important to get these records and I, and I really find that just I know, very gratifying to know that what we're studying here can have a real impact on people today. For Here and Now, I'm Jane Aidy with Land and Sea.